But Ferrari were not even ready for Sebastian Vettel, meaning that essentially Ferrari fell for their own dummy. Well, let's see what Ferrari did. Well, the first one's gone all right, and the second one is a complete horror show. And in 2020, I don't really see this changing at all. As you can probably tell, 2019 for Ferrari didn't quite live up to the potential it had. A car that for half of the season was able on pace to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Empire was utilised poorly by those in Maranello. It led to many, including myself, to wonder how a team with this much potential could underwhelm so much. Luckily for the Italian team, 2020 was a second chance with stable regulations to finally overturn their superiors, Mercedes. There were hush whispers about what Ferrari were cooking up for their loyal and abused fan base. Some got pulses racing. Even the over-extravagant build-up to the reveal of the new car was enough to get one excited about many things in the moment and to come later. Would the car, though, be worthy of such a lavish reveal? A shortened pre-season testing program compared to 2019 would help give us some early signs. Those early signs were rather disconcerting, to say the least. The car simply flatlined in its first few days of running compared to what the team were expecting. They had gone for a higher drag design concept to counter the weaknesses of 2019, only to go seemingly too far the other way. The team were in fact so unconfident going into the actual season that they stated that no sandbagging was being carried out despite our doubts. Corona would save the team from potential embarrassment in Melbourne and allow for a revision of the team's plans going forward. Once the season started finally in Austria in the early part of July, the grim reality for the team and the Tifosi was revealed. Ferrari were now midfield cannon fodder and at the mercy of the ever-competitive upper midfield teams in McLaren and Racing Point. They were even being outperformed by perennial underperformers Renault who were essentially what they were the previous year. The first qualifying session of the year would show just how much of a wound the team had inflicted upon itself. They were a full second slower than they were the year previous. This would only set the tone for what was to come. And once we got into the race, that would also set the tone for what was to come as Charles Leclerc produced a great drive for second place while Sebastian Vettel injected steroids into the biggest F1 meme of recent memory. But due to the unusual circumstance of racing at the same track a week later to help fill the calendar up in 2020, they had the chance with new upgrades to begin their clawing back of the pace and ground they'd given up in just a few months. That week would change nothing. They were just as shit, if not even shittier than the week before with the wet qualifying session proving how this car all around was mediocre at best. But at least with a dry race on Sunday, they would have the chance to gain vital knowledge as to the impact of their upgrades. Until... Fuck! 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 Oh! This moment proved what we already knew. The trackside running and operation of this team is a complete shit show. No matter what Grand Prix it may be, you can always rely on Ferrari to sweep the bingo of committing embarrassing and fatal mistakes. What follows from this point forward will only illustrate that this team has become the definition of insanity. After a surprisingly good result in qualifying in Budapest, they did what they know how to do best and threw it away with their new number one Charles Leclerc in the easiest way they know how. Strategy. Inaki Rueda worked his wonders yet again by putting Leclerc in the race on the softest tyre after the wet start to the Grand Prix when it was obvious that such a move was suicide in trying to accomplish the best race result. The two Silverstone races was a repeat of the first Grand Prix in Terminator Land with Leclerc achieving extraordinary results with a dog of a car while Sebastian Vettel was driving a car seemingly much worse than the one of his teammate. The first weekend, he barely scraped his way into the top 10 and only did so in the race due to Efron teleporting to the 2013 British Grand Prix in the final few laps. The second weekend started off similar but was much worse in the race with him releasing the sequel to his spin in the first race 
of 2020. The reasons for his spins in this season though were quite different to years past as I will explain later. His result would at least improve in the next Grand Prix in Spain despite the team having not a clue what they were even doing with his race strategy. From the outside, it looked like they were on a two-stopper after his first stop where he switched onto the softest compound. But then, some laps later, Sebastian received this over Team Radio. What do you think about going to the end with these tyres? Uh, for fuck's sake, I asked you this before, yeah, yeah, now yeah. I've been pushed for three laps. Understand, we are just checking. It depends, yeah, yeah. Everybody watching this video would be able to devise a better strategy and run an F1 team immensely better than this bunch of low IQ clowns. At least they didn't resort to the infamous plan C or D I guess. That race would feel like a race win though compared to the following races at Spa and then a pair of home races at Monza and Mugello with the Mugello round being their 1000th Grand Prix. They were probably wishing that Lady Corona had brought about the apocalypse so they could avoid what was quite possibly the worst 2-3 race stretch in the team's history. The Belgian Grand Prix was the perfect example of how this team had self-destructed in the space of a year. In qualifying for this race in 2019, they locked out the front row. In 2020, they locked out the 7th row in 13th and 14th place. That hurts. Not as much for the Tifosi though as the following race at Monza where they put in by far their worst performance at Monza in their history. 13th was the best they could manage in qualifying before the usual dramatics in the race leading to a double retirement. And at a time where it was supposed to be a grand celebration of this historically great team's accomplishment of 1,000 races, it instead had become a time to mock the fallen giant. Mugello Grand Prix weekend was only positive for more superb driving from their new number one Monegasque driver in securing fifth in qualifying. The race felt like a slow, painful death where he and his teammate were eventually subjected to racing their hearts out to beat a Williams. Same Williams team that was lapped two to three times a race during 2019 by Ferrari. They were now even barely able to be the highest finishing Ferrari powered team in races. Something like this was never thought as possible before. But do you want to hear the worst bit of it all? The worst bit of it all is that the biggest positive of 2020 for Ferrari is that it did get better for them after these three races. But they were still miles away from where they desire to be and where we expect them to be. And for the rest of 2020, the tone of how the season started for them would be how they finished the season out. Charles Leclerc pulling miracles out of his arse and keeping the team relevant while Sebastian Vettel fully evolved into a meme and was still being sabotaged by the committee of dense Italians. The only Grand Prix of 2020 where Ferrari looked remotely close to being worthy of the name was the Turkish Grand Prix, which was helped by their two drivers being as great as they are, dealing with the wet and incredibly slippery track conditions for third and fourth place. Every other race was awful parade after awful parade of pure shit. I know you guys want me to go into fine detail in these final few Grand Prix of 2024 Ferrari, but at this point, I'm just repeating myself. And to avoid this video becoming repetitive of the video I made on them last year reviewing their 2019 season, I'm not going to do that. Because as I said earlier, this team has become the definition of insanity. Who were the responsible culprits of this titanic sized disaster? What I will say firstly is we can't really blame the drivers. In my view, Charles Leclerc did the best he could with what he was given. And yes, he was favoured over Sebastian Vettel during 2020, but let's not act like his car was great or anything. There were a few hiccups along the way, but other than that, Charles Leclerc was pretty great. As for Sebastian Vettel, as I'll get into in a later video, his performance was not solely down to just being poor. Yes, he was not driving at his absolute finest and he's definitely not at the peak of his powers. But due to the previous years and what him and the team have gone through, Sebastian just wasn't supported anywhere near well enough as he was in years previous. The proof of this can be seen in the differences between his car and Charles Leclerc's car. Now Charles Leclerc's car was still pretty poor considering it's a Ferrari but it was a lot more stable. Bastien Vettel's car looked at times undrivable. 
Sebastian would even say at times that it was undrivable too. If you give Sebastian a car that has a very loose rear end and is very prone to spins, he will spin because his driving style quite simply cannot deal with that type of car. If you go back to his Red Bull days, you will see this clearly as to why he was so great then. Because the rear end of that Red Bull grip wise was never going to step out of place. Meanwhile, in this 2020 Ferrari, it was the complete opposite. But honestly, I don't think you can really blame the drivers at all for 2020. At the end of the day, no matter how great they are, they have to be given a car good enough to perform at the level they're expected to perform at. If you want Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc to win races and possibly world championships like you think they should, they need to be given a car that is capable of that. So no matter what they did, it was always going to be a disappointing season for them. So again, the blame can't go on them. The majority of blame must fall at the doorstep of team boss, Mattia Bonotto. The boy who lived learned fuck all from his grand job of reversing any positive momentum for the team in 2019, where countless races were thrown due to inexperience and incompetence. He has led this team now to not one but two failures on the design front when he still has a key say over the philosophy. He has still failed to fire incompetent members of his team and replace them with people able to make key and race-making decisions. He has continued to deny the team's flaws despite even the simplest of F1 fans understanding their problems. He still cannot manage a driver lineup filled with two very fast and excellent drivers vying for the team's undoubted attention. He is so shit at his job that their best result of the season was, I'm sure, by coincidence, when he wasn't even there. He has literally turned this team into the biggest and greatest meme in F1 history. This man couldn't lead a group of people to find their way out of a room, never mind to world championship glory. The only solution is to peacefully sunset this man's career at the Scuderia. You may say that he should be reallocated to his former role as technical director, but that would undermine whoever the new team boss is going to be. Plus, let's not forget that, again, he is highly responsible for this team's technical failures over the past couple years. Oh, and there is also the allegations that they were cheating when it came to the power unit a couple years ago, which I'm sure has done Ferrari's reputation absolute wonders. But he isn't the only problem here. The regime above him giving him more undeserved time at the helm and backing him are also a massive issue. And it all started back in 2018. Due to Ferrari not fulfilling their potential in 2018, Maurizio Riva Bene was under a lot of pressure for his job. And Bonotto within Ferrari was seen as the successor and was liked quite a lot by the now deceased ex boss of Ferrari. And Sergio Marchionne would give his blessing for the move to be made before his untimely death and the replacement to him made it happen. And because they essentially had to appoint him and sack Arriva Bene out of respect to the fallen Don, they have now backed themselves into a corner for which they don't believe they can escape from. At the end of the day, Marchioni made a critical mistake that has still been respected to this day. They believed Bonotto would be enough to move this team into being a world championship winning team, but he simply hasn't done that. He has instead, as I pointed out previously, set this team back years. But still at this very moment, they are now pushing forward with Bonotto with the vague hope that 2022 and the new regulations in that year will reverse the team's slide. The weed in Marinello must be very strong for that type of optimism. And it refuses to get any better for this team as now they don't even have a CEO anymore. With the team now soul searching for their new hero. And in this year coming, 2021, Ferrari are going to be going for three years in a row of clownery and buffoonery. They won't disappoint.